Cruising can be very enjoyable and it's the easiest way to see multiple destinations in a short amount of time. However, the process of getting to the cruise port and going through all the screening can seem daunting and a little overwhelming. I'm going to give you the information you need to know to help make this experience a little easier and a lot less stressful. We've been on numerous cruises with several different cruise lines and have found the boarding process to be very similar throughout the entire cruise industry. When first considering a cruise, it's important to make sure the cruise fits you and your family. This means find a cruise ship that offers the activities and destinations that your family will enjoy. Because being bored on a cruise ship during sea days, because you can't find anything that sounds enjoyable, can give you a bad experience and maybe even deter you from future cruising. Picking the right ship is just as important as choosing the right destination. If you're struggling to find the right ship and destination, it's always a good idea to seek out a qualified travel advisor to assist you. They will help guide you through the process and should have personal knowledge and experience in cruising. You should ask them if they've ever cruised before and if they say no, well then you should probably find a person that has that personal experience. Once you've found that perfect ship and destination, now it's time to get there. This is where the process can become overwhelming and where the travel advisor will be very beneficial. If you have time, I always recommend getting a passport for cruising. They're not required, uh, other than Virgin, they do require them. You can get on most all other cruise lines using only a government issued ID and your birth certificate. However, if something happens and you get stuck in a country for say a medical reason, miss the ship or anything that causes you to need to leave the country in any other way than the cruise line that you came there on, it can cause major issues and delays if you don't have your passport. You'll have to reach out to the U.S. Embassy and get them involved. This could be very time consuming, racking up extra fees and costs that you were not planning on. The ability to cruise without a passport, however, only applies if you are leaving from and coming back to a U.S. destination. If you are cruising from a foreign port, then you will be required to have a passport. The next thing I would recommend before taking your cruise is purchasing travel insurance. I hear all the time that I'm not planning on canceling, so it'll be fine. No one ever plans on bad things to happen, but they do. Travel insurance protects you from more than just canceling. It also protects you in case of medical needs, misconnections, delays, and so much more. Did you know that most medical insurance have a fine print saying that they will not cover you in a foreign country. If you think that you are fine with the coverage you have, you could be sadly mistaken. Okay, now you have all the boring stuff out of the way and have your trip booked. Now it's time for a tip to help speed up that boarding process for later and learn a little bit more about the ship. Most cruise lines have an app where you can enter all of your information and help streamline the boarding process. This is all the medical issues, questionnaires and stuff that they may have. You can take care of that right on this app. This will also allow you to choose things such as your boarding time, your dining time, reserve specialty restaurants and shows. It will also show you where the things are located on the ship and their hours of operation so you can help plan ahead. This app is a great tool in helping you navigate the ship and learning more about it and what there is to offer before getting on. When packing for the cruise, there are a few things that you must know to help keep you out of hot water on boarding day. One of the most common no-nos that get cruisers in trouble is bringing an iron or steamer on board. Unfortunately, these are not allowed as they are considered a safety issue and will be confiscated. Now you will get them back, but not until the end of the cruise when you disembark. Another popular item that will get you on the naughty list is a surge protector. You are not allowed to bring power cords or surge protectors on board. Those are also safety issues for the electrical system. You are allowed to bring electrical adapters, splitters, or three-way plugs to help give you some more outlet space. If you're planning on bringing alcohol or water, juice, whatever it may be, just be aware that most cruise lines have a policy on what liquids you are allowed to bring on board. This can include, you know, your alcohol, your water, your juices, etc. If you're planning on bringing on any liquids, be sure to understand your cruise line's policy before arriving to the port because you may be required to discard these items or they may be confiscated for the duration of the trip. 
It's always a good idea to arrive to your departure port the day before your cruise. This way, if there are any travel delays, it gives you a cushion and can save you from missing that much needed cruise vacation. Many hotels near the port will offer free or discounted shuttle service to the port. You can typically find a nice hotel at a reasonable price for the night. This will also give you the opportunity to rest up so you're not exhausted for that first day of your cruise. You paid for a nice vacation, you should enjoy every minute of it you can. So it is finally boarding day. On your cruise documents, they will issue a boarding time. Be sure to show up at this time. It's acceptable to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early. This allows you for unloading of your luggage and a pre-check. I would not recommend showing up any earlier. The cruise lines have said that they will not let you board until your designated time. Now. I'm sure that there are some people out there who say that they showed up early and it was fine, but do you really want to take that chance and be the one sitting in the waiting room for several hours when you could be sitting back at a comfy hotel or doing something a little more enjoyable? When you're going to the port, you can take the shuttle offered by the cruise line or the hotel. Or personally, I like to take an Uber or Lyft. They are typically pretty cheap when staying close to the port and you're not waiting on a hotel shuttle or trying to navigate back to the airport to catch your cruise line shuttle. When you arrive at the port, there will be porters there to meet you and take your bags. If they're not right there at the unloading dock, there will be a sign directing you to where they are located. Be sure to fill out and attach the luggage tags the cruise line provided you with. This will ensure they get to your stateroom. Make sure the person taking your bags has a cruise line ID tag on them. If you see the ID tag, it is perfectly fine to give them your luggage. The porter will make sure your bags get onto the ship and they will be delivered to your stateroom sometime that evening. Make sure that you put anything you might need into your carry-on so you can have that available. This includes your IDs, uh, passports, medications, anything that you may need that you can't afford to wait on until later. Another thing to note is your room will probably not be ready until later that afternoon. When that is often depends on when the last guest checked out and disembarked and when the room stewards were able to get started on it. Most cruise lines I've been on, this has varied somewhere between 1 and 4 p.m. If you have a late boarding time, well, then you may be fine. Otherwise, just keep this in mind when you're checking your luggage. Once you drop your bag off, then follow the signs to the boarding area. If you need directions or are unsure of where to go next, there are workers stationed around that will be glad to help you. Have your IDs and boarding pass readily available. You will be asked to show these several times throughout the boarding process. Most cruise lines will give you your boarding pass on the app. Others may not issue it until you check in at the port desk. Either way, you will need to have your IDs available. This process can seem stressful, but it really isn't. Just follow the direction of the workers and go into the port. You will have to go through security very similar to like you did at the airport if you flew in. You should put everything into your carry-on and send it through the x-ray machine. You will then have to walk through a metal detector. Once you gather your belongings, you will be directed to the next area for check-in. Here's where many cruise lines differ. When checking in, some will issue you your C card or your room key here. Some will send you an armband in the mail or give it to you here at the port desk. Others may have room keys on your app or a room key may be waiting for you outside your stateroom when your room is ready. Whatever the case, the workers will inform you of that at this point. After checking in, you will be directed toward the boarding area. Follow the signs to the ship, through the gangway, and finally to the entrance of the ship. Here they may ask for your ID or your boarding pass one last time before boarding. Once you have passed this final checkpoint, you are now on this ship. Now that you're on a ship, the process is still not quite done yet. There are a couple more things that you still need to do. So as soon as possible, you need to log in and connect to the ship's Wi-Fi if you have the app. Most cruise lines have an online safety video all guests have to watch before sailing. Some are going back to the in-person briefings, but your cruise line will let you know what they expect. If you have the online safety feature, you will have to watch this video, then personally check in at your muster station. The station will be listed on the app with directions on how to get there. If you're unaware or unsure where this is, just ask a worker, they'll be glad to point you in the right direction. 
Be sure to do this as soon as possible. The ship cannot sail until all guests have completed the safety information and checked into their muster station. You don't want to be that one person who gets announced on the PA system for not checking in and delaying the crews from departing. Once you have done all of these things, you are now free to enjoy your vacation. I hope you guys found this video useful, and if so, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next adventure.